Like many adaptations, Netflix's Bird Box underwent a number of changes on its journey from the page to the screen, and some of them are pretty surprising. Loosen your blindfold and take a look at some of the biggest differences between the book and film versions of Bird Box. The Bird Box book takes a slow-burn approach to the apocalypse, with the spread of the monsters unfolding over a span of months. The movie speeds things up dramatically, compressing much of the chaos into a single afternoon. In the book, Mallory doesn't join up with other survivors until three months after America starts seeing a wave of mysterious deaths. Instead, she and her sister Shannon, whose name was changed to Jessica for the movie, first take shelter together in a rented home they share. The sisters board up the house, watching the news and listening to the radio for updates on the outside world. At first, Mallory's not even sure if the monsters are real, only becoming convinced when they inspire her sister to take her own life. In the movie, Jessica sees one of the monsters as she's driving, causing her to crash the car and walk into traffic before Mallory's eyes. In the book, Shannon dies more quietly inside the sister's house, when a window becomes exposed while Mallory's in another room. Whatever Shannon sees inspires her to fatally stab herself with a pair of scissors. It's only at this point that Mallory becomes convinced the monsters are real, after which she finally decides to leave and seek out the help of others. In the movie, Mallory finds refuge in a house with a group of strangers, with whom she hides out for a couple of weeks. In the book, though, she sticks with this group for roughly half a year. And it's a pretty different group, too. Many of the book's survivors were replaced with new creations for the movie. These characters included Charlie, the supermarket employee and aspiring novelist, Greg, the owner of the house, and Lucy, a young woman who teams up with Felix to steal the group's only car. John Malkovich's Douglas shares a few traits with a character from the book named Don, with both men being blunt, cynical, and concerned about the group's limited resources. He's one of the movie's most entertaining elements, and for the most part, he's made up. And what are they going to do with Greg? Starve? Better them than us. Both versions of Bird Box feature the characters Tom and Gary, with Gary's role as an agent of the monsters staying more or less the same. But Tom, played by Travante Rhodes, has a much bigger role in the movie than he does in the book. I'm not leaving you. I'm not leaving you. Listen, listen to me. I'm... I love you so much. In the novel, Tom is a blue-eyed, sandy-haired man who dies when Gary betrays the survivors, never becoming romantically involved with Mallory. In the movie, Tom manages to kill Gary, keeping him from hurting Mallory and the newborn kids. Afterwards, he spends five years living with Mallory in another location, acting as a husband to her and a father to the two children before sacrificing himself to protect them all. Bird Box's creatures are a threat in both versions of the story, but the movie makes the monsters much more malicious. In the film, there's no doubt that the monsters are trying to hurt people, while the book is a little bit more ambiguous. One notable example occurs during the river journey, when Mallory and the kids run into a monster. In the book, the creature attempts to take off Mallory's blindfold, but actually backs off when Mallory protests. It's implied in the book that the monsters aren't necessarily evil, they're more of a force of nature that neither the characters nor the reader is able to totally understand. The movie monsters act more traditionally villainous, attempting to manipulate people with psychological tricks, like faking human voices. Despite these differences, neither the book nor the movie actually show what the monsters look like, which in the movie's case is a pretty good thing, considering the silly design they almost went with. In both versions of Bird Box, birds serve a purpose as warning signs for people, like canaries in a coal mine, indicating the danger is close. In the movie, the birds are helpfully immune to the monsters, but in the book, animals are as vulnerable to the creatures as people are, making them less useful for survival. The movie presents Mallory's birds as an essential asset for the river journey, but in the book, the birds die before she even starts the trip. In one sequence during the voyage, an entire flock of birds falls victim to the monsters, causing bird bodies and blood to rain down around the robot. For a while in the book, Mallory also keeps a border collie named Victor with her as a seeing eye dog. It's a clever arrangement that ends in tragedy. When Victor is exposed to one of the monsters, he reacts by fatally chewing off his own legs. One of the most intense points in the movie comes when Mallory and the kids encounter rapids on the river. Knowing that her death would doom the children, Mallory tells the kids that one of them will have to take off their blindfold and act as her navigator. Before her change of heart, it's heavily implied that Mallory is going to choose Girl to make the sacrifice, potentially dooming Olivia's daughter while sparing her biological child. Somebody has to look. I'll look. No, I will decide, okay? I will decide. Just give me a, just give me a second. 
While it's one of the most suspenseful parts of the movie, this moral dilemma is completely avoided in the book, where Mallory asserts that she'll be the one to take off her blindfold. Don't be fooled, though, the book version of Mallory is still a pretty intense parent. Both versions of Bird Box end with Mallory and her kids reaching a safe haven, but the lead-up to their journey has big differences. In the movie, Mallory and Tom learn of the potential refuge from a mysterious voice on the radio. Tom is optimistic about the new information, but Mallory is skeptical. It's only after Tom's death that Mallory is pushed into making the journey. In the book, Mallory knows about the sanctuary for years and raises her children with the goal of eventually seeking it out. She vigorously trains the children for the journey from a very young age, teaching them to keep their eyes closed and identify sounds, to the point that their senses of hearing surpass hers. Sometimes her training takes an uncomfortably brutal approach, with Mallory punishing the children for opening their eyes by hitting them with fly swatters. When they're babies, she even briefly considers blinding them with paint thinner. So if you thought movie Mallory was hard to sympathize with, just know it could have been so much worse. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.